So I just finished my first race in iRacing online and I have to say it was absolutely fantastic. In this video I'm going to cover a replay of the race and explain how I drove the car and more importantly how I learned about the car and how to drive in iRacing so that you can maybe use this in your driving and ultimately become a faster sim racer. I've been racing professionally for over 20 years and I've been coaching for over 15. I want to take that experience to help you become better sim racers. I just left the car in neutral, got some RPM up and then popped it into first gear. Isn't the ideal way to, to, to get away from the start, but I didn't really want to run the risk of, of making a mistake when I don't exactly understand how I should have done it previously. So in this video, I wanted to explain exactly what I learned. Um, in my first race in iRacing and I think it's important that I initially speak about uh, my process before I even started the racing. I only did, I'd say, 15 laps um, in iRacing before, uh, before this race. I didn't want to give myself too much time uh, because in the real world we don't get a lot of track time so I want to keep that time pressure on me because it kind of replicates what I'm trying to achieve in the real world. And for me, that's the whole point of, of, of the sim and using the sim, it's to replicate the real world and, and for me to build on my experience and, and practice for the real world. So, first of all, I'm driving the, the Mazda Global Cup car. Um, I have to say it's very realistic. I've driven these Mazdas uh, a lot in in real life and um, the way that this car reacts and the, the amount of grip it's got is very very similar to the real world. So I guess that's the first um, learning that I had while I was testing and while I was building my pace in this car was that this car is all about managing the weight um, and moving that weight from the front to the rear and how you turn the car into the corner as smoothly as possible. Uh, it's very, very sensitive to, uh, to braking. So that means that if you think about how the weight is moving around the car, when we brake into the corner, we need to be super gentle, um, at least when we're turning the car into the corner on the brake pedal. If we carry the brakes in too much um, as we're coming into an apex and the nose will be down because of the deceleration. It will have too much weight and then it will oversteer. And that's typically the first problem that we see in the sim here is that all of the drivers are oversteering on the way into the corner. And it happens in the real world too where it's our natural reaction to over brake going into the corner, but actually it reduces how much grip we've got in the car. And so to be quick in this master specifically, we need to have very, very gentle um, braking as we enter the corner. Uh, and you can actually turn the car in and then if you need it to turn in some more, you can grab a little bit more braking, give the weight, the front, some more weight and some more grip and it will turn the car. So if you watch my footage now and watch the braking, um, as I come down the start finish right here, we're gonna be heading into turn one, which is one of the bigger braking events um, on the circuit. And by the way, just to fill you in, I'm in first position. There's a guy probably a couple of seconds behind me uh, who was reasonably quick, but he kept on making mistakes, so he, so he backed away from me. But I'd prefer to talk about the technique here. So just watch the braking trace here and look at how gentle it is now. Look, there's a tiny little bit of braking uh, going through that previous corner. This section uh, doesn't require any braking, but the next section, if you watch the brake pressure, look at how lightly I'm braking. And this is because I don't want to transfer grip to the front and away from the rear of the car. Look at how light the, the braking was there. It was only a hint on the brakes. And that's because I don't want the oversteer when I go in. Watch the braking again, lightly there, right? So it's quite heavy in a straight line, but then as soon as we come into the turning point, I'm getting much, much lighter. Um, on the brake pedal, anything more than that, and we're gonna get over there and drop the grip out of the car. So my suggestion to you in this area is to actually really, really focus on, first of all, whether the car's oversteering on the entry to the corner, and if it is, work back from there and get more and more gentle 
uh, on the brakes at the point when you turn the car into the corner. It's, it's fine when you're in a straight line to brake hard because all the tyre grip is being used for actual deceleration, but if it comes to the point where you're turning in and you're still really heavy on the brakes, this car specifically, um, and to a probably lesser extent in the other cars, although I haven't driven them yet, will oversteer on the way in if you trail in the brakes in too much. So beyond that, the next point where I was struggling with this car was as we came into the apex, it still had that oversteer. So if you think about the platform of the car and how that's reacting, we want to, we're going into the corner and we're having to decelerate because we need to slow the car down slightly for the corner. So the nose is down and we're off the brakes, but the no, we're still decelerating, so the nose is still down. So what we want to do here is actually get back on the throttle to settle the rear of the car down, transfer the rear, transfer the weight to the rear of the car, improve the balance, give the rear some more grip, and then find your way through the corner. So the important thing here is that you don't get on the throttle way too hard. We don't want to be accelerating in a jerky fashion. We want to be supporting the rear, just breathing into uh, the accelerator pedal so that we settle that rear down. So if you watch it going into the next corner, you'll see that when I do get back on the throttle, it's just a little bit, just to settle the rear of the car down. So off, a little bit on now, and now we're going back on the accelerator pedal and into the next section as well. Let's watch it again. We're braking gently, back on the throttle a little bit and now going. And it shows you even more in that corner that there's a, a point in the corner, the mid corner, where I'm only on the throttle maybe 10 or 20%. And the whole point of it isn't to accelerate the car through the corner. It's to settle and redistribute the, the balance of grip. So, We've got the car working well on the way into the corner, at the mid corner, and then the next section is just to wait in that area uh, uh, of the corner before you actually get on the throttle quite hard. Now this Mazda doesn't have a, a huge amount of power, so it means that <clears throat> it means that you don't that you can get away with slightly harsher inputs once the car is settled down and you can get it out of the corner. Again, like I said, at the mid corner, we don't want to be stamping on the accelerator. That will cause the car to slide and possibly even understeer. If you stamp on the throttle mid corner, it sits the rear of the car down uh, quickly. And depending on what's happened before that, um, if the car's neutral and you stamp on the accelerator, it can just cause understeer because it picks the front of the car up. Uh, it loses its connection with the track and, and you just understeer off, off the circuit. So, you need to make sure that you get on the throttle nice and smoothly. Wait until we're coming through the apex. You can feel that the car's kind of set there and it's biting into the track before you then get on the accelerator. Obviously, if this car was a, a higher power car, then you would want to be even smoother as you get in the accelerator, even when you're coming out of the corner because it has the potential to wheel spin. Uh, but this master doesn't really do that. So just to update you with the race, uh, we are three quarters of the way through. Um, I'm still in the lead and, um, and I was starting to pull away from the car behind me at this point. He was about as quick as me as, as I mentioned, um, but, uh, but he was making those mistakes. So I'd just like to run you through a lap here um, at, at the Lime Rock Park. I'd never driven on this, this circuit before. So we'll go from the start finish straight. We are into the first turn. We're braking um, just before the second braking marker, I think. And then we're going down two gears, down to third gear. So four, three, two, now on the brakes. Just before the first one, get the car down towards that first apex. And we want to be actually back on the throttle a bit here, on the concrete, then lifting off to get the nose in to get it to turn and then accelerating through here. I found a wider line initially here was working well, and then just balancing the car all the way through here, and then if you did it properly and wanted to take a bit of risk, you could get through that previous right-hander flatter. Now the next right-hander is a very difficult corner. It requires a tiny, tiny amount of brake pressure, and then a little bit of support on the throttle, wait, and then accelerate once you get the car settled down. Really important as you come up over the brow there to get the car as straight as possible. Any steering angle there and it could cause a horrible kind of snap over steer moment. 
Coming into the, the final corner here, we can turn the car in flat out before we have a bit of a lift, support the rear and then accelerate hard. I did lift a little bit early in that example there, but it was coming to the end of the race and I wanted to make sure that I didn't make any mistakes because this was the first one and uh, I'm thinking about my safety rating and, uh, and trying to, to gain those points there. To be honest with you, I don't understand everything in iRacing yet. I've literally spent 30 minutes on there trying to understand. I thought this was the best place to start. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments uh, what I should be doing next. But I plan to do um, a few races each week, maybe three races each week, and record my learnings uh, through, those races, through those races. So if you want to go on the journey with me, see how I learn, and actually me give you some tips on uh, and how, how we can all be faster in sim racing, please subscribe to the Driver61 Sim Racing channel. And that was it, I mean, I really enjoyed the race. To be honest with you, the way that it felt and the, the nerves that I felt was pretty much the same as real world racing. Um, the concentration here is seems to require a little bit more focus from me when I'm in a, a real world racing car. I find that because of the, the G-force and the way the car's moving, you feel a lot more action going on. Um, it's easier to keep your focus. I could feel my focus drifting off a little bit in the, in the sim racing and I had to bring myself back to actually think, okay, consciously where I should be looking and, and how I should be working um, through, through each lap. Uh, but the nerves were incredible. I actually think it's easier to make a mistake in the sim racing than it is in the real world. And I, I don't quite understand why that is yet. I'm sure I will understand it with a bit more experience. But um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna be doing much more racing, particularly in iRacing from now on. Now that you've learned a bit more about iRacing, why don't you check out this short playlist that I've put together to help you improve your sim racing technique and ultimately make you a faster sim racer. Just click the video up here and I'll catch you in the next video.